when we moved into the neighborhood, it was really all but perfect. It was very quiet. Many of the people who were here had been here for at least two or three or more decades. I've been here for a long time, nice and quiet. We knew everyone around here, so that makes it more pleasant to live around here. We have Dignity and we have Lockwood. Dignity is for the beauty. Lockwood was for activities. The kids looked forward to going every afternoon. There was always something going on over there. Well, as far as the community around here and around this area, it's real peaceful, it's real inviting. It's, it's like home. It feels like a real neighborhood. It feels like a neighborhood out of a historical novel because it, it has pretty much what America represents. The whole place is just steeped in history. Um, when they were doing uh, excavations on the foundation of the home across the street, um, they found cannonballs from the Battle of the Alamo. So a lot of people are moving in this area, which is good. They're restoring a lot of the houses. We're sort of looking around sort of inner city, sort of downtown area for houses, and we came across a house for sale and fell in love with the house, first of all. And very quickly, we got to meet a lot of the people and the neighbors, and it sort of sealed the deal for us. You'll find every type of person uh, trying to create a life. There's retirees, there's young professionals, there's people that are so involved in the neighborhood, it's inspired us to do things. It served as a kind of bridge between San Antonio's past and its very bright future. You know, you can see the Hayes Street Bridge and you can see the Alamo Brewery and you can see all of downtown from these areas and I don't think there's anything like that in the rest of San Antonio. However, I wish there was something more for people with families. Ah, this hurts. We came out here on a summer afternoon and the park, the playscape was literally unusable. It was too hot. So it got us thinking like, this could be better. This should be better. Kids need a, a space that they can play and take risks and climb things and just um, have fun. And you could see that that's not here. That's the big thing that's missing here. A lot of the kids here in the neighborhood, their lower income families, they don't have a park they can discover and play in and explore in. You don't have any place to sit now but in the very center. And who wants to sit on a wall? <laughs> Youngsters, yeah but senior citizens can't afford to do this. They should really upgrade it because it's old, it's been there f for a long time, and kids are just tired of playing with the same old thing. They want something new. Sometimes we don't know what to expect when we go to Lockwood Park. Uh, we've run across people who um, are sleeping outside. Uh, we've run across stray dogs. We've run across um, dangerous materials that are left on the ground. About a year, two years ago, it was, it was a lot of stuff to go on at this park, and uh, but a lot of that's been cut down. Like, it's not been no violence up here. It's not been no fights. It's not been no shootings because of our presence. You see other spaces, other parks around the city that have been updated, that are a little nicer. This park is pretty basic. We know the neighborhood needs some sprucing up. We know there's things that need to be done. It's not a finished neighborhood yet. There's a, a growing sense on the part of the neighborhood and surrounding communities that the park isn't everything that it could be, that it could be a nicer park. This is the perfect place to be pursuing something as ambitious as a park re-envisioning. So there's a community redesign in the works of Dignity and Lockwood Parks. The scope of this project is really quite simple. It's to facilitate a process that allows the community to redefine the park for itself. We're helping uh, people with different opinions talk to one another in a, in a productive and respectful way. And we're, br we're bringing our design skill set to, to bear on the problem of uh, park design. It doesn't quite belong to any single firm. It, uh, our team's comprised of architects, landscape architects, parents, teachers, um, and community leaders. I'd say right now we're at an early conceptual stage, which means that the design is very fluid, it's changing frequently, uh, there's still a lot of opportunity for input. We want something very open-ended, very open to interpretation by the kids. I'd like to think of something that involves the whole body, the whole mind. We want something based on nature, something creative, something inspiring. You know, you really need to get a playground designer to be able to facilitate kids of all ages. We, sometimes we concentrate on the toddlers, but we have to do something that's gonna, going to interest that adolescent, 
they're just kind of lost in the shuffle. If I see the preachers being bright for this neighborhood, um, I like the direction that it's headed and because I know where it came from. The best thing in the world is what's happening. There is somebody who cares. They're making an effort. We've tried to go slowly in order to uh, make sure that everybody feels included and everybody feels heard. I, I feel like everyone's really lining up behind this project, which is encouraging. There's been a collective realization that this community has always had what it takes to shape its own future, and this project is going to serve as proof of that.